Uh, so let's look at linkable ring signatures, stealth addresses and mixer contracts. So this is how elliptic curve works. So elliptic curve is used in lots of applications such as Tor, Wi-Fi and within blockchain. The way it works is that uh, we create uh, a point on an elliptic curve uh, which is well known to everyone and then we generate a random uh, number, a 256-bit random number. That then becomes the gradient from the point till we meet the elliptic curve again to define the public key. So the public key, P, is equal to the private key multiplied by G. The private key is a scalar, 256 bits. The public key is an XY coordinate and is 512 uh, bits long. This is an example of G. We can see it's an XY coordinate there. And the difficulty here is it's actually very difficult to find out what the private key is, even though we know the public key point and the G value. So the way the addresses work in Bitcoin is that we generate a 256-bit random number initially, that is our private key and we shouldn't really give that, well we should never give that away. That's then stored in a certain format called the WIF format, it's a base 58 and there are just certain characters which are missing from our normal base 64. From our private key we can then use the elliptic curve DSA method to create a 512 bit uh, public uh, key. Then from that we can create a hash of it and then we produce the address. The address is the identifier which the user is known by. If someone sends someone bitcoins, they will use this address. If we are sending bitcoins, then it's this address as a sender. So the way that, uh, that bitcoin works and cryptocurrencies often work is that Bob and Alice have a wallet with a key pair, as we've seen. The private key generates the public key the public key is then used to generate uh, the address. This is a public address. When Bob is sending Alice some cryptocurrency, uh, he will use her address, the transaction amount, and then will use his private key to sign the, the, the message or the, the transaction. We will then put his public key onto the blockchain so that anyone can prove that he was the one that actually signed the transaction. So Eve, Alice, in this case, will now have the right private key to be able to identify this address here. So she will now receive the payment. If she wants to send on to someone else, she will use her private key to be able to sign her transaction. So the problem that we have with uh, Bitcoin is that these addresses can be seen and can be traced. If someone knows what the, uh, one of the addresses are, then it's possible to, to, change, to, to uh, determine all their transactions. So one way to overcome this is to use what's called uh, stealth uh, addresses. And with stealth addresses, what we do is that uh, we use a key exchange method to be able to negotiate uh, a, a new public key and secret key. So Alice starts off and she will, send, she will have a private key. She calculates her public key, which is this G value times D, to get a public key. She then passes that uh, value to Bob. Bob creates a random value, E in this case, and calculates P is equal to E times Q. They then have a shared secret. Uh, for Bob it's EQ, and for Alice it's DP. P is sent back, and they will have the same shared value, which is E times D times G. The problem with this now, to use a, this is a, to generate the, the address, or the, or the public key, is that Bob and Alice would both know the key so that uh, Bob could actually sign away this transaction again. So they generate uh, a receipt address which is new. So 
Alice will have uh, her own address, but now we're, dra we're de determining a new address to where Bob will send the bitcoins to. And because of this modification here, Alice will be able to generate the private key, which is associated with the, uh, the, pub the public key address of this new address. Now let's look at linkable rings, stealth addresses and mixer contracts. So on the ring signing, what happens is that it is possible for a number of parties to get together with their public keys and then to sign a transaction so that it is known that at least that one uh, entity with inside uh, the signing process has signed for the transaction, but it's not possible to tell which one it actually is. The way it's done is that Bob creates a ring signature by taking all the public keys of, uh, of the other people in the ring and then will create a, a trapdoor or a secret uh, key that will allow uh, him to be able to sign the overall message. Then we bring in the concept of linked ring signatures. With a linked ring signature, then Bob, even though no one can tell that he signed it, he can add a tag on to make sure that uh, it is known that he is the same one who signed a previous one with the same tag. So it's possible to tag uh, these signatures for their identity, but not possible to know what the identity is. We can then create what's called a mixed contract with link, linked ring signatures. In this case, what happens is that Bob wants to uh, send something to Victor through a smart contract, but doesn't want it to be known uh, the, uh, who is sending it and who is actually receiving it. So the way it's created is with our uh, addresses that we just saw before, our stealth addresses, and then with our stealth addresses we can, uh, we can negotiate uh, uh, a new private key. So uh, Bob contacts Victor, generates a new key pair and it's the key pair, the public key, that he's going to use to sign the ring. And then, we'll, uh, through elliptic curve Divi Hellman, allow Victor to create uh, a private key which will match to uh, the public key which is provided through the smart contract, the, through the contract. Victor then uh, provides the tag that Bob has provided and the private key for the signature to be able to prove that he is the one who can state claim to uh, the payment. So what happens in the contract is the contract will define the number of participants for the ring and then wait for that number to be uh, set up. Each will pay their, their bitcoins or their cryptocurrency and then each will actually uh, sign with the required key that is only known by the, by the entity which is uh, to receive the payment. Once the smart contract gets enough participants, it will then match against each of the signers and then allocate uh, the currency towards that payment. Okay, so that's been an introduction to link signatures, stealth addresses and mixer contracts. Thank you.